much does playing for England mean to Adrian Morley? Oh, it's, it's absolutely incredible honour. You know, I've, I've been lucky enough to win quite a few um, team honours in, in the game, but for me personally, representing my country was and is the best thing I've ever done in the game. And I've uh, been lucky to have a quite a long international career, but it don't make it any less special. You know, each year, and um, you know, I'm incredibly honoured. I think you know when you get a bit uh, towards the, the latter end of your career, you you certainly uh, make the most of it and savour each moment. I'd love to play for England forever, but I know that's not going to be the case. So uh, you know, I'm I'm uh, incredibly honoured. You're a very familiar face around the England cap now. It must be reassuring for people like Gareth Widdip over there and Joel Tompkins to come in and, and play alongside someone. Yeah, well, you know, I'd, I'd like to think so. I mean, I've got uh, <coughs> plenty of experience, as you say, and you know, Steve Max picked. Uh, few of the older guys, myself and, and Jamie Peacock in particular, but the young boys who, who are coming in, you know, they've got uh, huge potential and, you know, hopefully long international careers, uh, you know, in their own right. So it's great that he's, he's, uh, <coughs> he's certainly got an eye on the future. Steve Mack in the, in the squad is picked and, uh, you know, if we can help these young players coming through, then that's that's great. The, uh, Steve's got one eye on the Rugby League World Cup in 2013. Any chance of Adrian Morley still being around uh, oh, well, I mean, for that one? I mean, you know, I'd, I'd love to. I mean, I'm, I'm a realist. I know uh, you can't play for, for England forever, but I mean, I've been, been reasonably happy with my me, uh, me club form and I think, um, you know, with all the techniques and um, uh, advice on nutrition and um, recovery and that kind of thing, I think players can, can play a bit longer now. Uh, yeah, so... I mean that's uh, you know, it's a goal of mine to, to play at the highest level for uh, for as long as a long as I can. I've got another two years on me uh, on me Wolves deal, and um, yeah, I mean I'd, I'd love to still play for England then. And I mean that that could be a, a new goal, you know, to uh, to represent England in, in the World Cup. So uh, yeah, nothing's nothing's <laughs> impossible. For many years, you, you were a bit of a, uh, a an oddity in the fact that you were an NRL player, a player with, with NRL experience, playing for Great Britain or England. Now there's four of you in, in, in the squad. How important is it going to be that people like Gareth Widdop, Gareth Ellis, Sam Burgess coming in there and uh, putting that experience to the test? Oh, well, you know that, that experience is invaluable when, when you're going to play against the Aussies and the Kiwis. You know the, these boys will, uh, will will know them uh, inside out. But I think uh, if, if you look at the New Zealand side, they they, they tend to struggle, and as soon as they got the majority of their squad playing in the NRL, the, the international team improved dramatically. So. I do think um, you know the more English players we have <coughs> over there will improve them personally and therefore improve the, the international team. So it's great that them boys are over there and, and doing doing extremely well. I might add. So uh, you know I think it's it's great. Any surprises from yourself that those guys are doing so well? No, no. I mean that they were you know very talented players before they went out. I mean they, they proved in the Super League what they're one of the best in the business. And I think um, you know I think English players all the NRL. A little bit too much esteem, really. I mean, I know it's a it's a tough competition. It's probably um, it's probably just slightly um, uh, the standards are probably just slightly better than Super League. But I think um, the players hold it in too high of an esteem. You know, I'm confident all the England players can go over there and not just hold down a regular place, but um, be standouts over there. And and Gaz and Sam and uh, even Flano and uh, Dean, you know, they're they're proven they can uh, mix it with the best. Okay, before the formation, there's a small matter of uh, Lee Sports footage on Saturday and a match against France. How important is this game in terms of England's development? Yeah, well, it's, it's vital preparation. I mean, it's, it's the test match in its own right. We're first and foremost, we want to we win the game, but it's, it's great that we get a chance mid year to spend a week in each other's company, uh, get familiarised with the moves and, and that kind of thing. But I thought we'd done some really good stuff in the, in the Four Nations that last year. We uh, you know, we failed at the final hurdle, but you know some real, real good stuff was done, and it's, it's great that we get this opportunity to uh, tap into that. And uh, yeah, as I say, great preparation for uh, for the end of the year. A new coach as well with some new ideas. That's going to be interesting to see how Steve fares, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, everyone's very impressed with, with Steve. He's very enthusiastic, and um, he's served his apprenticeship under Tony. And um, yeah, he's got some some great ideas. And you know, everyone's uh, got 100 percent faith in in Steve and what he can do. And yeah, it's. Uh, Good opportunity is his first game, everyone's very excited.